Hey Pitmasters, what is up? Today we're going to make a delicious hanger steak and we're going to look at a new grill. Look at this new grill. Napoleon sent me a new grill and guess what? It's not gas, it's charcoal. Weird, right? Because it looks like a gas grill, but actually it's a charcoal grill. And I've never grilled on this grill before, so it's going to be my first and I want to take you on that tour with me. Let's take a look inside this grill. We got those typical cast iron porcelain coated grill grates. Look at these baskets. These are charcoal baskets. Very durable. And there's a big handle here. Look at that. This handle actually raises the charcoal bed up so you can increase the temperature of your grill. But what I really find attractive is that you got these baskets and you can take one basket out for instance. And now you created an indirect zone. So you can have two charcoal baskets in, you can slide them around. You can decide which setup you want for your grill so you have a direct and indirect side. I think this is gonna work. Now, if we put the grill grates back, you see you can't reach the charcoal, but look, they put in a lid so you can actually still reach the charcoal. Maybe go in there with the charcoal poke. And what are these for? Oh yeah, it's a ventilation slide. Basically, it's gonna let air in from this side, reach the charcoal. That way you can get more heat, more intense heat going. Let's fire this puppy up and see how she really does. You know what might be fun? We get a little bit of the, the wood fire that we got in here, put it in these baskets, and start it up that way. Now at this point, I already have to go think about how I'm going to set up that grill. Because we gotta take in mind that we're going to grill a hanger steak, so we need a lot of direct heat to sear it properly. And on the other hand, we need to give it a little rest, maybe cook some things on the side, so we need a lot of mild temperature. And then on the far end, we need some temperature to just let it relax. Time to bring on the heat. As you can see, we built it up in a way that on one side we got a lot of charcoal, in the middle we got a few chunks of charcoal, and in the cooler side we don't have almost nothing. We'll put the grill grates back on, close the lid, open the vent, and let the barbecue come up to temperature. Part of our recipe is smoking beef ribs. Look at these. Beautiful bone marrow. And as you can see, we got some smoke coming from the wood that's in there that's not fully turned into embers or charcoal. That's going to be perfect to smoke our bone marrow. So we'll put them on a high position and we're just gonna let them sit there until they pick up enough smoke and they turn nice and soft. We're also gonna put in this garlic and we're going to hot smoke it until it turns soft. It's gonna taste amazing with that hanger steak. We got a lot of things going on in our grill and I wanna keep my eye on it, making sure that it goes well. It's the first time that I'm cooking it on it and I'm really excited about it. I'm making sure I keep my eye on the temperature, see if it's going up or it's keeping stable. Want to play around with these vents and that's basically how you get to learn your new grill. You can see that the log that we put in is smoking, it's producing fire, we got a lot of heat going on and that is so exciting about this grill. I absolutely love that. It's like live wood fire cooking that we're doing in here. But the thing with that is that you got to keep an eye on it, you got to keep controlling the temperatures. You got to be in tune with your grill, you got to feel with your hands and determine where it's hot and where it's not. Move your food all over the place just to get it to cook absolutely perfect. Our barbecue is now reaching really hot temperatures. We are at 260 degrees Celsius, but that's in the lid. So we're good on our elevated rack, but we need to move over the bone marrow. It's cooked, it's been smoked, it picked up a lot of flavor. I just want to set it to the side to give it a little bit more time to calm down and really get those juices flowing. The garlic is starting to open up and you can see at the same time it's picking up smoke. When it's nice and soft, we're going to take it off the grill. I'm moving this grill right over. And I'm gonna add another... 
yeah, I don't know, it's just like a habit. You know, we don't need to move over the grill grate. We just got, we got the opening here. So we just put in a chunk and look at how easy that is. So we're just gonna give it a little bit more smoke because I want that garlic and the bone marrow to pick it up. And you know, when we put it all together with that beef, mm, it's gonna taste amazing. This is our Wagyu hanger steak and it doesn't look good right now, but we're going to clean her up and make her look really pretty. The first thing that I want to do is expose that meat. There's a lot of fat on there, which is a natural thing with Wagyu. Here in the middle, there's this hard tissue here. Silver skin, membrane, call it whatever you like, but we need to take it out. Now you can see that we have exposed it and point the knife upwards and just move along that center and Take it all out. Look at that. Clean off. We took that hanger steak and turned it into two beautiful independent steaks. We took off the silver skin and we left on as much hard fat as we could. This is what we're left with. It's gonna be real exciting. We're going to cut it into medallions and then start grilling it up. But first, we gotta take a look at the garlic. The bone marrow is definitely done. It's got the color that we're looking for. And my guess is the garlic is done as well. But there's only one way to find out. To see if the garlic is done, I wanna pinch it. And when it's completely soft, then it's ready to come off the grill. Today we're grilling with something special. I got a big block of salt and we're going to put it on the grill. But first, we gotta warm it up. Over the coldest part of the grill, let it come up to temperature real slow. But when it's up to temperature, it holds a lot of energy. And that's going to create a beautiful sear mark on our steak. I put in a little bit more charcoal and I put in a whole log of wood. This is the exciting part of this grill. You can tune it, you can do with it whatever you want. Our garlic has turned soft and we want to get out that goodness that's in there. Look at that. We need to get it out into the jar. Do you guys remember the beef ribs video that we did? Well, here's the fat. We're going to render it down and use it for this recipe. Over that hot fire and let it melt down. I'm also going to take this big chunk of fat, put it on the stone to determine if it's hot or not. We let the bone marrow cool down a little bit. Now we're going to take it out and put it in a jar. Our stone is slowly coming up to temperature. I'm just moving that piece of fat around Look at that, it's going to oil up our stone, it's going to release that salt. And so by the time that we are ready to sear our steak, the stone is going to be absolutely tasty. It's going to be one tasty stone. Look at that, it rendered down like bacon. I'm going to add that fat to our bone marrow to soften it up just a little bit. Make sure that it turns really soft. Now this is pure flavor, but when it cools down, it turns hard again. So we're going to add a little bit of olive oil. And this is just to make sure that we have the right consistency. To this, we're going to add some salt and pepper. Now we have to apply this very scientific taste test. Mm. That is really good. Super, super rich in flavor. I just want to add something to it though. Something that freshens things up, like a little bit of lime juice. Mm. That lime that balances everything out, it lightens the whole thing up. Absolutely fantastic. So this is done. And the other half of that lime we're going to add to our garlic. I'm also going to add a lot of olive oil to this. And that's about half the amount that we used in garlic. And now I'm going to add two tablespoons of my Bombastic Barbecue Rub. If you don't have the Bombastic Barbecue Rub, don't worry about it. Just take another barbecue rub. It's going to work just fine. Make sure you push that garlic fine against the edge. Let's give it a try. Mm, like angels peeing over your tongue. Well, we can definitely tell our stone is hot right now. Look at that. The fat is blackening on the outside. Our stone is ready to be grilled on. I'm just gonna use some of that rendered down beef to grease up the stone again. You can hear we have a good sizzle. We're ready to go. I'm going to set our sauces over the indirect heat on the grill. I want them to warm up a bit. Now we're going to slice our hanger steak into medallions. Oh, well, because we were recording our thumbnail, the grease on the salt stone turned black. And in itself, that's not a problem. You just want to clean it off again. Just scrape it off, the blackness. We'll put on a little bit of new fat. And now we'll finally put on the medallions. So 
So we're taking our medallions off the grill and we're just gonna let them rest for a little bit just to relax and let the juices flow back in. Our stone, I'm gonna move it to the other side. Let it cool down a little bit and then afterwards you can clean it with a wet towel. Don't go all crazy and put it under the tab and trying to get it as clean as it used to be because that's just going to take away too much salt. Leave it as it is, clean it up just a little bit and next time you're going to use it, fire up the grill, heat it back up again and it's hygienic. It looks black but it's going to work perfect and it's going to last you a long time. When you've been grilling on a stone, you want to figure out how salty your steak has become. So we gotta at least try one. Now let's give it a try and see if it's salty enough. <laughs> the flavor of the beef is so intense and it's so moist here and it's like so much fat in there. It's all beef flavor. It's not super salty. In fact, for my personal preference, I would add a little bit more salt, but it definitely has a little bit of seasoning on it. <laughs> now I'm just eating. Oh, you got the burn mark. Yeah, it's a, it's a cutting board. That's, that's how you, you make burn marks on a cutting board and the cutting board instantly looks better. I'm just gonna chop fine some parsley real quick. And now we're going to plate up. Now we're going to put on our bone marrow and render down Wagyu fat. Look at that. <laughs> like I said, I'm kind of proud of this dish. It just looks so good and all the components tasted fantastic. So I'm hoping that the outcome of everything together is just gonna, hope it's gonna make me smile. And I bet it will. These are bold and magical flavors. Super rich, super creamy, and you know, I love it. I just love it. It's like really hard to explain right now what goes through my mind. Okay, let me, let me give this a try. It tastes like Wagyu and it tastes like beef for sure, but it's rich and it's creamy and it's like, Everything you need, like in this season with autumn. Man, it just warms your heart and your soul. Real tasty stuff. It's not too salty. It has spices in there, but they're not overpowering to the beef. And even the garlic, it's not like it attacks you. It's not, not too heavy. It's just right. This dish is absolutely freaking fantastic. And I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe video. So uh, I want to say a big thank you to everyone that's a patron to our YouTube channel or a member right here on YouTube. If you don't know what it is, go down below in the video description. You can find out right there. And I want to ask you if you're up for it, maybe you want to translate one of these videos for your fellow countrymen. The link is also down below in the video description. It's very easy to do and uh, everybody gets to understand these videos. So that's a big plus. In the meantime, I want to say it's makkelijk and keep on grilling.